book smarts for street smarts and practical skill sets. Who is going to last longer in an SHTF scenario? Let's talk about it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here, so a few more ideas for you to ponder today. Generally speaking, there's different types of intelligence, so you can be really smart in one area and really stupid in another area. So you think about the average nerd who has an incredibly high IQ, but perhaps has terrible street smarts. Uh, you could probably relate street smarts to social smarts or emotional uh, quotient or the emotional intelligence. Or you could have somebody who has exceptional street smarts but doesn't have the cerebral nature to formulate abstract thoughts and opinions and think critically and analytically. There are people who are very technically gifted. They can fix a car, they can fix a broken appliance, they can do home repairs like it ain't no thing. You give them anything, any simple task, they can do carpentry, all the trades work you could imagine, but for whatever reason are not very good when it comes to analytical thought, to logic, reasoning, philosophy, uh, legality, those types of things. I think the people who are going to excel in the post-collapse world are going to be the technically gifted, not necessarily the people who are capable of formulating abstract thoughts and opinions. So for instance, you have preppers out there who are very handy with self-reliance applications. Yet, when it comes to their understanding of how the world might work, or their understanding of religion and philosophy, it seems to get incredibly more fundamentalist, dogmatic, very shallow and narrow-minded, and to be brutally honest, quite ignorant. And a lot of academics who spend their time in the sanctuary of universities and academia tend to be not very good when it comes to those technical skill sets. Lots of them don't have them. However, they do have a greater capacity to formulate deep analytical thoughts about various social and political issues. Something that more often than not is not achieved by the average layman. The fact is you can't be intelligent in everything. You can't be the fastest runner and the best long distance runner. You can't be the best long distance runner and the strongest man in the world because those two attributes are at odds with one another. So you can't master, say, powerlifting and then try to master running a marathon at the same time. Different muscle groups, uh, different form of training, different ways that the central nervous system is activated. So you just can't be the best at every single thing. So to have somebody who possesses great technical skills and at the same time is capable of those higher abstract forms of reasoning is very rare. I'm not saying it can't happen, it's just quite rare. And this is evidenced across the prepping community where you have a lot of extremism and a lot of fundamentalism. I know I harp on this channel a lot, but if you go to the channel Jason A, every single video that's posted, the guy has some sort of sensationalist misleading title, some false prediction which never takes shape. He went and took down dozens of videos that were false predictions uh, going way back to 2011. And what bothers me about it is not so much that he's doing it and that he's making a killing off of YouTube relating all of these new technological advances to the mark of the beast and biblical prophecy and yada yada yada. Basically any new technological invention is somehow heralding the end of times. And his followers eat it up and I do say followers because clearly after so many failed predictions you think that people would start to really question this guy but the overwhelming majority of people simply don't care. Perhaps it has something with the fact to do that if something is validating your opinion, you don't necessarily want to refute it because it takes more mental energy, of course, to formulate a new opinion. And people are just too intellectually lazy, perhaps. What worries me about this is the people who are going to survive are the ones with those technical skills. Okay, The people who have been pampered and sit there and contemplate the mysteries of the universe in an office on the fourth floor of some university somewhere are not prepared for the collapse of civilization as we know it. At least most aren't anyways. Maybe some of them do prep in private. Now if we presume that a lot of the people who are going to survive because they possess these occupations which are closer to the traditional occupations which you're gonna find when the world becomes deindustrialized after some large-scale post-apocalyptic scenario, we can make a presumption on the basis of that theory that these people are going to be highly susceptible to cult-like, mob-like behavior. 
Because while distrusting the government and being critical of the establishment, whatever you perceive that establishment to be, is a sign of intelligence, something I call FQ or FUQ, you can sound it out yourself. And I also call this the free man quotient. While that desire to be free to govern yourself is an important aspect of what it means to be an intellectual, more common than not it comes with the territory of people who are easily swayed by these charismatic cult leaders. Because at its core, a lot of these people are motivated by some sort of groupthink, be it regionalism, statism, nationalism, patriotism, extreme forms of religious fundamentalism, xenophobia, etc, etc. They easily succumb to us versus them ideologies, which are very black and white, which are very absolutist, which are not based on the scientific method and deep philosophical contemplation. Therefore, after the collapse, you're going to have a dumbing down of society in the sense that there's going to be a lot of practically gifted people, but there's going to be few artisans and intellectuals that remain because many of them are birthed in those urban environments and they simply don't have the traditional conservative skill sets required to survive a significant technological downgrading of society. So what you're going to have then is you're going to have a lot of those people who might not contribute to the some of the technical aspects of society, but they do participate more in the specialized areas of society which really do make us a civilization. You know, you can't write legalese and law without having an exceptional ability to follow abstract trains of thought. So what you're going to have then is a simplification of society where all these people who perhaps were not concerned with the task of prepping are probably not going to make it or they're going to be relying on those people who are in some cases mentally inferior only in an abstract way, not necessarily in a technical way. Now the argument could be made that this intelligentsia that I speak of is actually mentally inferior because they did have the foresight and the wisdom to prepare. Therefore, they're carrying the torch in the Darwin Olympics and the tables have now turned and the social order becomes reversed. And they're now on the bottom where before their specialization allowed them to have some of the most prestigious positions in society. All of those specialized areas of the social order are no longer relevant in a post-collapse world where everything's been uh, simplified right down to its bare bones sociological rudiments, which are basically concerned with survival. So everything gets more dumbed down and simplified. People are no longer obligated to fulfill this myriad of social obligations and contracts when the grid is up and civilization is running full steam ahead. Rather, people's time is preoccupied with hunting, gardening, getting purified water, doing more de-industrialized forms of labor, uh, sewing clothing, you know, just the, the bare bones things that we take for granted are all done by these higher orders of technology right now. But getting back to the naivete with all of this, uh, a great example of this is a prepper called Seven Trumpets Prepper. The guy is incredibly gifted when it comes to some of the technical aspects of prepping. I think he has a business that installs solar arrays. He's been on doomsday preppers. And, you know, he obviously has a good handle on the self-reliance bit. But the problem comes in when you start looking at what his other beliefs are and ideas are. And he's one of the proponents of the flat earth theory. And while I am open to entertaining any idea, as Aristotle said, it's the mark of an intelligent mind to entertain an idea without necessarily accepting it. So it's not that I am averse to entertaining these ideas which are outside the scope of current social conventions. But at some point in the case with flat earth theory, something really has to not be working properly up here if not only you believe it, but you're a proponent of it. And I've, I've actually listened to a lot of the arguments on this flat earth thing. And, you know, because, you know, hey, you just never know, you know, uh, who, maybe we're living in some matrix simulation, who knows. But the thing is, in the case of overwhelming evidence to the contrary, people still believe this stuff. People who have the ability to engineer firearms, people who 
have the ability to keep themselves and their families alive and continue to procreate have this inability to formulate complex and abstract thoughts so they're likely going to succumb to the first charismatic person who strings them along with some crazy ideas of how you know it's this group's fault and it's this group's fault that the collapse happened and so we better go and take care of business see the intelligentsia whether you like them or not uh, they're a hedge against this sort of cult-like behavior. Law prevents lots of this nonsensical stuff from ensuing. And there's a lot of nonsense out there. There's a lot of people who have absolutely no interest in the finer workings of the world. And then there's that subset of the population that does have that inkling of wanting to know more about how the world works in a perhaps distrust in mainstream media narratives but they're so easily swayed and caught into these propaganda traps and this these disinfo traps and of course they get misled into supporting these causes where they're mentally spiritually and probably economically in some way shape or form exploited the short of it is these people are going to be used and the critically minded amongst us because most of them are probably not of the preparedness persuasion are probably not going to last. I've made many videos about this. I made a video called After the Collapse, Fundamentalists and Radicals. I also made a video talking about the reversal of the social order and how people who are in the high points of society now, who rely on this complex socio-technical apparatus that we've created in order to keep themselves sustained in their position, whose positions only exist basically if, if civilization is there for instance you, you can't have an anesthesiologist in a post-collapse world it's just too specific of an occupation to meet the demands of, of that sort of environment because what you're gonna have is people moving from the urban areas people are gonna become more diffuse into rural communities thus you're not gonna have these huge concentrations of people which are gonna be able to sustain these specialized disciplines you know, there's a reason why you have to go to the big cities if you want to get a certain type of specific medical treatment because there needs to be a certain amount of people to support and justify having that occupation exist. So we move from specialization to generalization in the post-collapse world in terms of the occupations that people have. If you had a collapse scenario in which things were progressively deindustrialized, you're not necessarily going to have less jobs it's just that the jobs are going to be more bare bones you're going to go back to the blacksmith the butcher the baker the candlestick maker type thing now in terms of the building blocks of a complex social strata you have to have your bases covered first you know you can't have people contemplating the mysteries of the universe with cosmology and and uh physics and stuff like that if you don't have people growing the food you know, so we've evolved to a certain point which has allowed us to have some of those people supported by the hardworking people down below. So if and when society deconstructs the whole complex economy as we have it now, the whole house of cards falls down and uh, everything goes back to the baseline. If it does ever happen, guys like me will probably be out of a job. But who knows? Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments section don't forget to like comment subscribe show your support for the channel by sharing these videos thanks for watching canadian prepper out